Hi, in this video we're going to show that a set is a subspace of the vector space of all differentiable functions using the real numbers as our scalars. Alright, so we have a theorem, the subspace theorem, or as I called it in our class notes, the very useful theorem that says if the two closure properties hold, then our set is a subspace. And that's actually an if and only if theorem, so it can be used both ways to show that a set is or is not a subspace of some other known vector space. But here we're told that the set is a subspace, so we know that we should be able to show that both properties hold. So it's a matter of just doing that. All right, so I have the additive closure property that I need to show, and also the scalar multiplication closure property that I need to show. So that's going to be the structure of my showing that this is a subspace. Uh, so it's kind of just a matter of filling in what exactly does that look like and how exactly do I show those two things. All right, so to show additive closure, what I want to do is show that if I start with two functions that are in this set, when I add them, the result is still in that set. So I'm going to start up here at the top with two functions, f of x and g of x, both be functions that are in my set w. Okay, so what that means is that for both of those, they satisfy that differential equation. So this means when I take appropriate derivatives and substitute into the differential equation for f of x and also for g of x, they make that equation true. So both of those functions make that differential equation true. That's the defining characteristic of what it means to be in that set. All right, so what I want to show is that f of x plus g of x, the sum of those two functions, is in the set w. So my claim is that they are in w, now I need to show that. So what I want to do here is show that when I take the sum, f of x plus g of x, and substitute it into the differential equation, the differential equation is true. So in place of the derivative, I'm going to have f of x plus g of x prime. And then in place of the original function, y, I'll have f of x plus g of x. And what I want to show is that's equal to zero. So I don't want to write equals zero and sort of assume what I'm trying to show. So there are a couple ways I can do that. Just not write the other side and then show that it really does equal zero. Or you could write equals zero with a question mark there indicating that that's the question we're trying to answer. All right, so uh, I'm going to erase that and just work on one side and show that if I keep simplifying the left side here, I will get zero. All right, so when I do that uh, on the left side here, uh, when I find the derivative of a sum of two functions, we can find just the derivative of each function separately. That's a property from Calc 1 that you learned when you first differentiated functions. And then here I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 through. So I have 3 f of x plus 3 g of x. So my original left side of the differential equation is equal to this. So I've just simplified. And then I'm going to rearrange these a little bit so that the f terms are together. So I have f prime of x plus 3 f of x and then g prime of x plus 3 g of x. So all I did there was kind of group the terms so that I had the f terms next to each other and the g terms next to each other. And then I'm going to use the fact that both of those functions satisfy the original differential equation. So I know that f prime of x plus 3 f of x is going to be equal to 0. So this part here is going to be 0. And also that's true for g of x. That's going to be 0. And 0 plus 0 does equal 0. So that means that when I simplified the left-hand side of that differential equation, and I simplified it, I did get zero. So that makes the original differential equation true when I substitute f plus g in for the function. So that shows that f plus g is a solution to that differential equation. And therefore that means it's in that set w. 
So I do have additive closure. Now what I want to show is that I also have scalar multiplication closure. So I'm just going to use one of my two functions I started with up at the beginning, f of x or g of x. I don't need both of them. Uh, but I also need a scalar. So I'm going to go back up here to the beginning and I'm going to add kind of a sentence here to the beginning. I just want to let c be any real number. So I'm going to put here c is an element of the real number. So c is just an arbitrary real number. And then what I want to show for scalar multiplication closure is that c times f of x is in the set w. And so I need to show that. And again, I'm going to show that by substituting c times f of x into the differential equation and show that I really do get zero. And so really I know what should happen here. It's just a matter of making sure that the steps connect and lead the reader through being able to understand why that's true. So it's really about justifying your steps. All right, so there I've substituted c times f of x into the left side of the differential equation. And then what I want to do to show that that really is a solution is show it makes the differential equation true. So I want to simplify, simplify, simplify until I get it to equal what the right-hand side of the differential equation is. All right, so you have a property from Calc 1 about when you have a constant times a function and you're going to differentiate that, that you get constant times derivative of the function. That constant just comes along out front when you differentiate. And then on this next term, I'm going to um, make 3 times c times f of x. I'm actually going to just regroup that a little bit and put the c out front, c times 3 times f of x. And I'm going to connect those two steps with an equal, so the original left side. And now I've just done a little bit of simplification for that. And now I'm going to factor out the c. So I'm left with f prime of x plus 3 f of x. And I factor out the c. And again, I'm going to use the fact that that f of x is a solution to the differential equation. So what I had highlighted up above here, f prime of x plus 3 times f, f of x equals 0. So this part here is all going to be 0 since f of x was a solution to that original differential equation. So here I end up with c times 0, which does equal 0. So the differential equation is true, or c times f of x is a solution to the differential equation. All right, if I want to write up a very nice um, response to this question, I might then say, therefore, by the subspace theorem, since we have both additive closure and scalar multiplication closure, we know that w is a subspace of the set of all differentiable functions. I'm just going to write here by the subspace theorem, not all those other words. w is a subspace of the space, vector space of all differentiable functions. Okay, so a couple of things to keep in mind here. When you're showing something fails, you can just show that with a counterexample. One example to show that a property fails is enough to show that it fails. But when you're showing that something holds or something is always true, you need to do that in general. So I didn't just pick an example of a function that satisfies this differential equation. I looked at just generic functions that would be in this set and a generic constant, not just a specific constant. And by using the generic functions and the generic constant, what I've done is shown that it doesn't depend on what specific function that might be, but it really is true in general. So that's important to remember when you're trying to show if something is or is not true. Is needs to be true in all cases, so you need to do it in general. Is not, you just need to show one failure to show that something is not true. So in some ways that's a little bit easier. All right, try some homework or watch another video. There's one more example of showing that something is not a vector space in the next video.